Hello everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to rebuild our search box from the previous episode using Alpine.js and eliminate that extra network request we were making. So on the previous episode, I showed you guys different ways to build the search box using live wire only. And the reason we had that extra network request was because we wanted the search box to be its own independent live wire component, right? So if you had the search box be part of or be a child component of our post list, we could have uh, kind of made life a bit easier. So I'll be show you guys what I'm talking about if you kind of, it's been a while since the last episode. Basically, if you go ahead and do a search with our current implementation, we are going to make two network requests. So one is to update the state of our search box and then the search box dispatches an event and lets our post list component, which is the component on the left, to hey realize, hey man, we have updated the search query, update the results, right? So it's sending two requests. So one thing we can do is uh, we can actually use Alpine.js and make it so the search box doesn't send that extra request, right? So if you don't like Alpine.js or you don't want to use Alpine.js, uh, you can skip this video. And again, the previous solution still works for a simple application like a blog. It's totally fine. It's not something overly critical, but still I think it's going to be a helpful and educational video for you guys. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. All right, so we have our code from the previous episode, which is basically our search box over here, simple HTML, and then the PHP code. We just have a simple property and our update function. So uh, let's go ahead and actually start off by first creating an Alpine.js component. Now, LiveWare is built on, on top of Alpine, so we don't really need to include Alpine. It's just already there if you have LiveWire. So in order to create an Alpine.js component, you need to select the kind of root element of your component or what you want to be your live or, uh, Alpine component and then add an attribute of X data just like, just like so and just adding this X data will create an Alpine JS component and then with this X data you can go ahead and define a state or like a data right as the name suggests and this is very similar to how you define data in Salivaware right so the data we're working on is the search variable right or it is search property so we can go ahead and do the exact same thing inside Alpine.js by basically passing in a JavaScript object to our X data and then define our property. So here I'm going to say a search and then my default, I'm going to set it, in, it to an empty string. Okay, so we have just basically defined a property or this is equivalent to defining a property inside our library component. And the next step, what we can do is we can go ahead and similar to live wire where we had this wire model and we binded the input, whatever we typed in the input to our search property and other way around, we can do the same thing with Alpine.js as well, except instead of wire model, we have to do X model. Okay, so the syntax is slightly different and this X kind of dash is uh, basically the prefix for Alpine.js attributes, right? Or directive. So that's it. Now we have binded the value of our input box to this search variable or data. And then whenever we type something inside the search box, it will go ahead and update this search property or data. Okay. Now that we have this guys, we can actually go ahead and perform the same logic we have inside this wire click update with Alpine.js. Now, because the logic is very simple and it doesn't rely on any backend data, this is a, the best use case actually we have. So if you look at our update method or our update action, all we are doing is we are dispatching a search event, right? Which is like a browser event. So we can use Alpine.js to send events as well, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, in order to handle clicks using Alpine.js, instead of wire click, you can do X hyphen or dash on click. And this is how you define on click events or on click listeners on Alpine. You can also do at click. This is also an option. I don't like the, using it here that, that often because some other JavaScript uh, frameworks use this. And also for some reason, VS Code just doesn't like it with my plugin and setup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use X on click. And again, it's gonna be more consistent with uh, X model and X data. And then here, in order to dispatch an event, we can do dollar sign dispatch. This is how you dispatch events with Alpine.js. And then the argument list for this dispatch is exactly identical to the live wire dispatch. Okay, so we can go ahead and say, uh, search so this is the event name and then the second argument is going to be the data we are going to send it can go ahead and pass it a javascript object which is kind of like the associative array or all the arguments we're passing in over here right so here i'm going to say uh, search is equal to search now this first search is actually our kind of argument name that we expect on when we are handling this event 
And then the second search is actually our Alpine component data. Now to avoid confusion, I'm going to go ahead and convert this query. So like, like a search query. So the names don't get confusing. So let's go ahead and do that. And then, yeah, right. So now this value is completely different from this one. Uh, just wanted to do that to avoid any confusions. And that's basically it, guys. We have converted our liver component to an Alpine.js component in just a few minutes, okay? Just two minutes. If you do it quickly, maybe even one minute. So let's go in and see if it's actually working or not. I'm going to reload the page. Uh, let's type something in. I'm going to say sit, which is like the second argument over uh, blog post over here. Hit search. And indeed, our search functionality is actually working using Alpine.js. Let's do notice, which is like this one. And it's also working. And let's also check out our network calls. And again, previously, as I showed you guys, we were sending two network calls. So now I'm going to clear this uh, network. Let's click on search again. And as you can see, we're only sending one network request. So we have eliminated the extra network request that we were sending with LiveWire and we are now using Alpine.js, right? So very nice. Now, since we are no longer using any of the LiveWire kind of uh, features, we are, I'm actually going to delete our search box PHP file. We don't really need it. Again, we are not using this file. And instead of having our search box be inside our library component, for now, I'm going to go ahead and move it inside our posts, okay? So inside this post folder, I'm going to create a partials folder, okay? And it's petrials. It should be partials. Partials folder. And I'm using the same naming scheme as we did inside our layouts. Sometimes I use includes and then I'll just use includes everywhere everywhere else. Sometimes I use shared. It's up to you, but whatever you choose, just try to be consistent throughout your project. So inside these partials, I'm going to go ahead and basically move our search box over there. Later on, if we start using the search box on some other pages that works with something other than posts, uh, maybe we can move it outside here. But for now, we're only using it to search for posts, okay? And then inside our index.php, which is basically post index.php, we can go ahead and replace this liver component with our, just do a regular uh, blade include, okay? So it's going to be posts dot uh, partials partials dot search box. Let's save this. Let's reload. Hopefully it should look exactly identical. It does. Let's try to check the functionality and the functionality also seems to be working. Okay. I'm not sure actually why we didn't get this last article. I'm not sure what it was. Let's try again. R E I. Yeah. So the search indeed is working. Let's try this autumn as well. Yeah. So we don't have our search functionality working and we can of course uh, sort them as well. Now, one more thing I would like to do guys is now if we, for example, are searching for something and we reload the page, we are showing the search result on the left, but we are losing it on our search box. Now, uh, I personally prefer if we actually sh show or have the default value be what we have already searched for. So this is relatively easy to do. So what we can do is we can go on our uh, search box and then instead of this query, we can go ahead and get whatever this uh, search URL parameter is and then use it as our default. So here I can say uh, request. We can use the request helper in PHP and then get the search parameter if it exists. And then the second one is going to be the default. By default, if it doesn't exist, just uh, return an empty string, right? So nothing basically. So this should now, hopefully, if I uh, reload the page, set it to whatever we are searching for. And indeed it is working. Let's try searching for something else. And then I'm going to go ahead and reload the page. And as you can see, our search box is actually showing the default value. So I like this a little bit more. And that is it, guys, for today's episode. So this is basically how we we can go ahead and use Alpine.js to do simple search. Now, if you don't like using Alpine.js, you can still use the previous what we did on the previous episode. Nothing wrong with that. I think for most applications, uh, it should still be okay. But if you care, you can go ahead and use Alpine.js for this. Now, if you want to expand upon this later on and add maybe some recommendations, something similar to like Google, right? So on Google, if you're typing in, it actually gives you a list of recommended search topics, right? If you want to add something like this later on, obviously our Alpine.js component is not going to be uh, that useful, right? So you're kind of forced to go back to a library component. Now, I don't have any plans of doing that, so I'm going to go ahead and use this Alpine.js component. But if you want to go ahead and later on add some drop down, some recommendations and some more advanced features that require backend calls, 
then stick to the library component solution totally fine and yeah that's it guys for today's episode i hope you learned something new i think it's going to be useful to know at least how to do it even if you don't use it uh kind of get some extra practice with alpine js and yeah as always if you enjoyed the video uh, smash that like button and subscribe to the, to the channel if you're new so you get notified of my latest videos and i see you guys on the next episode have a great day bye